Today, we caught up with Soda and Martin from Astar Network, and we talked about a whole bunch of different topics, including the challenge of launching a Kusama parachain auction, what's in store for Astar on Polkadot, and most importantly, Japanese fried chicken on Christmas. Hi there, and welcome to the Parachain Auctions podcast hosted by Kraken. I'm Brian Hoffman, crypto platform product lead, and I'm glad you could join me out here on the cutting edge of crypto technologies. On this show, you'll hear from leaders and innovators around the world building parachains on Kusama and Polkadot. Tune in for insights from the best and brightest about their new projects. Whether this is the first you've heard of parachains or you're a DeFi aficionado, come with us behind the scenes as we explore the technology of the future today. All right, today we have with us Soda Watanabe, uh, founder of Astar Network, and Martin Henskins, who's the VP of Growth, uh, both of which have been on the show before, but we want to welcome you back. Uh, very exciting times today, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having us today. Super exciting right now. Yeah, indeed. It's very nice to be here as well. So it's been a while since we talked, and I'm looking forward to this conversation. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, the last time we spoke, uh, you guys were actually coming fresh off of a win um, from from the last slot auction on Kusama. Uh, and around that time, you were uh, also going through like a name change, right? Or, or you're currently going through a name change from uh, Plasm to Astar, right? So tell us a little bit about that. How, how has the transition been? So basically, our name was Plasm because we started making plasma module called the pallet, but we changed our direction from making a pallet to making layer one blockchain, like a parachain. So a lot of people confuse the relationship between plasma and plasma because it is similar. And plasma is a notable layer two solution on Ethereum, which does not support smart contract. But we are making smart contract hub on Polkadot. So we had to change our name. And now we would like to be a star in Polkadot ecosystem. Then we changed our name from Plasm to a star. Yeah, it, it makes a lot more sense. I mean, I think uh, definitely the first thing that comes to your mind, you're like, oh, okay, is this the same same thing, but there's a lot of that in this space. But so, so you guys are uh, knee deep in a in a new auction. But before we get to Polkadot, maybe we could talk a little bit about how your experience has been on Kusama. I mean, you guys went through the process of bidding, got the slot, everything's you know, you got, we got to transferability with uh, Shidden. How has everything been there? Has it been a challenge? Like, what what have you guys run up against so far? Um, well, basically, um, I think the tagline of Kusama fits perfectly here, like expect chaos. And it was chaos. And we, we did like, well, we actually see like uh, Shiden or, um, as like a canary network. And actually, we learned so much only in the last three months as it's live for, no, for, for, for five months that it's live. We learned so much from this. And... I think that's so aligned with the vision that Gavin Woods had with um, setting up Kusama compared to Polkadot and being here in the same place by having like a canary network as well. This will make um, A-Star so much better from, from day one than, than Shiden ever will be from ever was on day one. So having Shiden on Kusama um, gave us so much insight on, on how Polkadot handles everything. And and yeah, we think our strategy also for the Polkadot auction changed a lot for, compared to the Kusama. And that's only based on what we learned from, from the auction with Chiden on Kusama. So there were a lot of challenges, not only for launching, but also um, with technology by implementing certain pallets on a parachain that um, weren't fit for a parachain as well. So even Parity had the uh, challenges um, with the parachains coming on on Kusama. So it was a challenge for everyone, not only for us as a, as a project, but also for Parity, the, 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 the people that created Kusama or that are creating Polkadot. They also learned so much for, from Kusama by the parachains being connected that they are now 
more ready with polka dot than they ever were with Kusama, for example. So, yeah, I think um, that demonstrates the the vision that Gavin had like two years ago. Now, in real use cases, that nobody was thinking, everyone was thinking like, oh, what would he do? Like two economic value chains? How is that even realistic and possible? And now, when everything comes together, it's like, oh, it totally makes sense. And and that's like same for us. Like we are so happy that we have like a Canary Network on Kusama as as now I'm um, hoping to be one of the first as well on Polkadot. Yeah, it sounds like you guys really have found some some real value there in having the Canary Network. And I I, I found it um, really interesting that you know, other platforms are considering adding a Canary Network. I, I think, I believe Cosmos is looking to add one or, or has added one. Do you feel that the work that you've done on uh, Kusama will lead to maybe expedited uh, ability to get to transferability for for the Polkadot chain? Uh, do you think it will speed things up for you guys? Or or do you think it just gives you a better understanding of what's needed to be done? Um, well, of course, I think what we learned from the launch from, from Kusama um, on Kusama, this will shorten time on Polkadot because we have the experience of we know what we need to have. Because when we launched on Kusama, the Genesis file looked different because now we can add more things in the Genesis file because we have it ready and we can implement it from day one as the moment we launch our private chain. That wasn't possible with the launch on Kusama. But now our Genesis file is more uh, has more functionalities than it will have on on kusama and this will give us like a head up a heads up for or even speed things up for for launching um, a star or uh, on on polka dots yeah so uh, just just for the uh clarity on our listeners um who might not really understand the the kind of technical background here what does a genesis file like what's the purpose of that and, and why would that be important yeah, the Genesis file, we have to register the Genesis file to become a parachain. So Genesis file is uh, like a state which has address and numbers. So blockchain comes from you know Genesis file. So in case of Bitcoin, the Satoshi Nakamoto inserted a sentence at the Genesis file just for the records. So for us, Asta is not launched yet. So we have to register the Genesis file on the top of Polkadot Relay chain to become a parachain once we win the auction. So, yes, correct. Um, yeah. and, and just so I understand, you know, why was that not possible previously? Like, was that something that uh, Parity uh, identified was an issue in the first round and that they fixed? Or is it just the way that... No, uh, no it's actually like, uh, as I said, it also was on Kusama. But let me just explain a little bit um, what we will do now, for example. So when we launched a Shiden on, on Kusama, we didn't have like EVM module implemented from day one, meaning like we only started with EVM um, after we were launched like a month. Um, and now EVM is so much better or more evolved for Shiden that we can immediately launch EVM on the first block that will be produced with a star. And that EVM is insert is, is, is available in the Genesis file, meaning like the moment a star um, joins as a parrot chain, it takes the Genesis file and it creates all the complete tokenomics, it um, creates like all the modules or pallets that need to be in place. It's actually like, um, yeah, like a DNA of, of a star. And having like, for example, the EVM available on day one, that wasn't possible for Shiden on day one on Kusama, for example. So that's yeah. why the Genesis file is more evolved than it was on Kusama. But it's the same mechanism, but mm -hmm. the state of the file is different. It's more mature than it was on Kusama. Okay, gotcha. So this is more more things that you had you had to kind of unlock over time in Kusama, but now you've got it all mm -hmm. organized so that you can just yes. kind of go to yeah. launch with that. Well, that's Correct. that's really great. Um, that just means that people can get working on Astar like much quicker than they than they yeah. were on uh, on on Shiden. Um, so speaking of Shiden, um, what what had what's like the most exciting thing you guys have seen being built on top? Yeah, uh, our most important feature on Shiden and also Asta is going to be DAPS staking. And DAPS staking has been already implemented on Shiden. So to make the long story short, DAPS staking is the basic income system that allows developer to earn token 
while making smart contract. I think developer is the most fundamental, most important human resource in entire blockchain ecosystem. But what they are doing is they are paying a lot of cost as a gas fee and nothing from the protocol. So blockchain is all about incentive scheme, but the incentive is broken right now. So we invented DAPS staking, so people can earn token while making smart contract. And people can stake ASTA token, Shiden token on DAPS, and based on that amount, block rewards will be distributed. So DAPS staking has been already implemented on Shiden, and people are using DAPS staking with very innovative way. And a project called, um, yeah, a project and 50K US dollar was shouldn't token per week as a basic income. If they implement something on the top of other chain, the revenue is zero. So this is a huge difference. And actually it is working on shouldn't. So I'm really excited to see uh, how it goes on Asta. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I mean, I think I think you point out a really interesting challenge around, you know, people who are creating dApps. Um, the way that we've kind of seen this evolve is that people create these dApps. They're super valuable for the consumer, but the creator kind of is left in this weird situation where they have to like create a, a, a you know, a governance token or some other way for them to kind of fund the project overall. I think this kind of alleviates yeah, the pressure to do something that maybe they are not ready to do, or they, they don't want to have to do it. Um, it. It makes it seem more sustainable to me. Yeah, um, exactly. that, that's really cool. It's very unique. So, so now that you're kind of looking at, um, you know, preparing for Astar Network, um, and I, I just have to say, like, it's 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 mind blowing looking at the numbers over here on Polkadot.js. I mean, what is this like? Almost five five point seven million dot has been contributed to your to your campaign so far. Almost sixteen thousand individual contributions, which probably doesn't even come close to articulating how many people are. Are supporting you because it includes exchanges, which are only counting as ones. Um, this is pretty, just pretty incredible. So, besides that obvious difference between uh, Astar and, and Shiden, what other kinds of um, differences have you been seeing between the two networks? Um, well, re regarding um, the differences, well, it's 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 pretty hard to say because first, um, Astar is not is not let it launched, and what's now um, happening. For example, when you select communities, um, some who are new in this ecosystem, they are a little bit confused because um, some <laughs> are coming into the community when they bought Shiden on exchanges or when they are looking for a change. But then they come to the community and then they see, oh, there's also an Astar on Polkadot, what's that? So it, it, it offers some kind of confusion with new people and uh, the newcomers in the ecosystem, and also you got like those who are now in in for the crowd loan on Polkadot, and they see like, oh, they also got also a network on Kusama, and it's very important and challenging for for I think every power, power chain now on that's going for that slot to educate the community and to 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 give the 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 documentation to them as well, and and I know like Kraken is very helping with it as well because you guys created like very great videos and tutorials and articles about explaining everything. And I think that's that's very important for everyone who wants to jump in into this, that first they need to educate themselves so they know what's going on. And that's something that we do every day, like me and Sota, when we go to an event and we want to talk about A Star or Shiden, and we got like a slot for 20 minutes. The first 10 minutes is only about for explaining Polkadot before we can even yeah. explain our own project or what we are doing because just explaining us is not the same as adding the value of poker dot as well first like they need to understand what is poker dot what's the value and what it can do before we can say and this is our value in the ecosystem um and i think that's a challenge for every power chain now and also a challenge for everyone who's coming into and the ecosystem from Polkadot, that um, it can be difficult to understand. Um, you, and I think that's that's the main challenge that we also are facing, not a part of the technical challenges. Do you think that the type of uh, 
contributor or individual has changed from before any of these uh, t- these tokens went live? Because I feel like, you know, prior to the Kusama auctions, no one really knew how this was going to go. Was there going to be big demand for these tokens? And then, you know, it kind of, I think right around when like like Moon River went live and it kind of like blew up real quick and everybody was like, oh, this is this is like legit. This is for real. Um, do you think the type of person that's interested in parachains has changed because of that? Or do you think people are just more excited in general? No, I think I think they are changed. Um, first of all, a lot of um, old contributors, let me say it like that, they understand it much more as well. Because um, they also, what's the great thing about parachains actually as a project, and, and a lot of people also know this, that if you don't perform as a project, you can be sure that in a year when the lease period is over, the community will not vote on you again because you need to have your community before for having that parachain slot. You need to be on top of everything for every year. So you need to show yourself as a project that you keep on developing, that you keep supporting, that you keep um, building, you keep making that infrastructure what we are trying to do for developers. That's also people who are now coming into the poker or also did it on Kusama. They now see what we have done with China and they see, okay, this is what they have in mind. This is their vision. This is what they are building. Okay, the product is already live. They can do depth staking. This kind of feature is live. Those projects are listed. So they have trust um, in the project as well that is going for poker dots. So, um, yeah, and also in general, the hype around Polkadot and, and the power of Polkadot is so much wider than it was with Kusama. One reason was that Kusama was Kusama and not Polkadot. A lot of people heard about Kusama, but didn't know about Kusama. But now they're hearing about Polkadot and they see Polkadot also like top 10 in the coin market cap. So they know Polkadot as well. So um, yeah, and I think more and more people are educated about the ecosystem as well. And this is because of podcasts like this. This is about all the events everyone is doing this is about all the parrot chains that are now connected on kusama like i was saying we educate everyone at every event um only about explaining polka dot before explaining the own project and yeah that's every that's what everyone is doing now in, in the entire polka dot ecosystem at this stage yeah it, i think the strengths of polka dot and its interoperable uh characteristics you know i think Every time we have these podcasts and talk with projects, it's always like a collaborative kind of thing. It's like, well, you know, we're doing these really exciting things. And then we're also doing them with Akala or like we're doing them with, you know, Moonbeam or whoever. Um, Everybody seems to play really nice. um, And I think it creates more value for everyone in the ecosystem. But like you said, education is, is super important. I mean, that's that's a big reason why we do these podcasts is because, you know, we we didn't even really touch on this, but. For Polkadot, you're now locking up your coins for two years, you know, most in most cases. So think about, is there anything that you have personally outside of this that you would invest and like be willing to lock up and lose, you know, control of for, for two years? You have to be pretty committed to that. Uh, and, and understanding what you're what you're getting there is is is, is super important. Um so I imagine your community is probably growing leaps and bounds. Like, ha- has it been a challenging time or is it, has it been exciting? Like, w- what are some of the things you're seeing around your community growth based on all of this? Yeah, I think we have uh, two points. So community is growing. So this is very good things. And the, we are such a community driven project. So we would like to hear a lot of opinions from the community. And we would like to improve our network step by step with community because our goal is to make decentralized autonomous organization. So we don't want to be a single point of failure in the long run. But uh, bigger community means, you know, there are a lot of different opinions. So some people are interested in a short-term benefit rather than the long-term benefit. Obviously, we are interested in a long-term benefit rather than short-term benefit. So there are a lot of the conflicts in the community. So we have to stay strong and we have to educate the community. And we are here to make Web3. We are not here to make someone rich. So yeah, we have to tell our vision more and we have to talk with the community more. This is a tough thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's challenging, especially in the crypto space. It's like, and in a bull market, you know, it's like you could, everybody says like, oh, it's not about like the money or whatever, but like, obviously there's a huge group of people that come into the space, you know, and that's really at first all they're thinking about. It goes Mm -hmm. back to the education again, right? It's like, okay, fine. You're here. The, the, the get rich mentality. That's why you're here. But like, while you stay, learn more about what we're doing, because then they can start to participate and you start going towards that DAO approach, which is really interesting to hear you say that you guys are going to be moving towards a DAO model um, and, and really empowering the community to make a lot of the decisions. I mean, I think one of the most fascinating kind of DAO uh, moves here is uh, Polkadot's branding itself is like oh, yeah. being crowdsourced, which is incredible. We got a chance to talk with Dieter from uh, Web3 a little bit about that. And I think it's just, um, you know, it seems kind of like a novelty, but you know, in the future, you're looking at most of the organizational decisions being made in this way, and, uh, or, and they're just proving out the model. Um, so uh, speaking of, you know, beyond the community growing, uh, how, has your team grown? Like, wh- have you guys been hiring and, and growing out that team? I know you want to go towards a DAO, but like, are, like, how are you thinking about expanding the amount of people that are actually helping you build this? Yeah, uh, definitely we are hiring. We have uh, a lot of the things we have to do. So now we have uh, around 20 members. So we, the, everyone was developer. <laughs> so community <laughs> said we need a better marketing. So we are hiring a marketing person right now. And the team is getting bigger and bigger, but uh, we are aiming to create a DAO. So you know, our contract is not so strict. So every people in our team can choose what they would like to do. They can decide, you know, milestones. They can decide, you know, what they would like to do. And based on the outputs, we are going to evaluate it one one by one. Yeah, probably uh, Martin knows more (laughs) about this. (laughs) Since you're VP of growth, let's let's, let's hear. (laughs) What's the plan for growth here, Martin? (laughs) Uh, the plan for growth, no, that's, that's, that's <laughs> difficult. Like, you know, we keep challenging ourselves. We keep challenging a lot, a lot of our, our, our group as well. Um, first of all, we have like different kinds of, of people supporting us. We have a great group of 40 ambassadors who actually are promoting our ecosystem in all different local communities. And um, we chosen to have like um, a compact group of ambassadors just to, to get them educated first and we know that they know the project before telling them in local communities um that's one thing that we we are doing we are um, adding adding a lot of members as well in the marketing team because um like when i started with with uh, plasm back then we were with around 12 people everyone was like a developer um and that's the great thing everyone was helping each other by like developing and, and, and making everything big, focusing on technology. But now when we got like that live blockchain, um, marketing is also very important and we know this as well. So that's why we are now hiring more marketing people for this and also expanding our decentralized um, team as well. Because we now have team members in Europe. We think we have four team members of Europe. And we have some in South Korea, Japan, and, and the rest of Asia. And now we also got like a partnership with um, Commonwealth. They created Edgeware. And they are now also supporting us with the development of a star. And they are based in the US. So we have also their developers who are now focusing on a star and helping us developing like and creating like the best smart contract platform of dev hub on Polkadot. So we now have actually developers all over globally. And I think that will give us like a technical support for projects who are building in our ecosystem like 24 seven, because um, now it was like, okay, I'm in Europe. So when I usually go to bed, the Japanese and the Asian people start to wake up. So, but now when we are more globally, everyone can, can fill in and, uh, and help each other and give more free time to those who are now with the crowd loan working for 16 17 hours a day now and having it more globally and spread out will give uh, more ease and more uh, relaxed um, time for the for the developers as well 
<laughs> it's always funny. I, you know, everybody always goes, oh, well, you know, we have people all over the world so we can get more rest and we'll have more coverage. And then I, I find it's, it just makes it harder now to keep, you know, up with all of the things happening since so much is happening while you're asleep as well. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think you really have to because these projects are completely global. They're 24 seven, you know, it's like, you got to have support from all angles of the world. So um, that's that's really exciting to hear. Yeah. So another area that's growing is um, corporate and kind of institutional interest. I'm curious if you guys have been, um, you know, getting any kind of inbound uh, reach out from large investors or like, you know, now Binance is in the game for from an exchange perspective. And I'm sure others are are soon to follow. Like, what has the interest been uh, for you guys? Have you seen anybody reaching out? Yep. Uh, so basically, we are raising funds right now, but uh, it's going to be successful. And once it's closed, I'm really happy to announce. So yeah, some of the legends already joined. So this is great news for the community. And regarding the big company, um, I'm Japanese and we have a, a lot of IP, the great IP and NFT. NFT is, you know, such, such a great and it's going to be super, super big in Japan. So I'm talking with some of the biggest NFT IP holders in Japan. And if they can join us, I think that's going to be a game changer. Yeah, that's very interesting. You brought up Japan. Um, you know, I mean, currently Kraken doesn't offer parachains to Japanese clients. But we have been hearing a lot of like really uh, like intense interest from people wanting to do that. Um, currently, I mean, I, I know that a lot of this stuff is on chain, but I mean, do you guys have numbers and metrics and things that you're seeing around uh, traction in Japan that, that indicates that this is going to be a huge market for this? Yep. Yeah, uh, we have already listed the JPY stablecoin on the top of Shiden, and it will be built on um, Asta. They recently raised the fund from SACO, USDC project. So it's going to be very legit. And in stablecoin is very fundamental, like a tool to create DAPs or NFT, purchasing NFT or something like that. Having JPY stablecoin is very huge for our, our ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, definitely building on stable, you know, building DAPs with stablecoin support is 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 really I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible how fundamental it has become and, and how table stakes it is. Uh, I remember, I think probably around 2014, having a conversation with Vitalik briefly around <laughs> the concept of like, how, do, how are you rebuilding dApps on Bitcoin? You know, if, if the price is shifting all around, you know, the concept of a stable coin didn't even exist, but already it was like identified as a need. Now it's just kind of a mandatory requirement for platforms, it seems right. like. Um. So, uh, you know, let's let's look forward a little bit. I mean, you obviously haven't uh, nobody's won an auction on Polkadot yet, but seeing how much traction you guys are getting, uh, it's hard to think that you won't be winning one soon. Um, what do we have to look forward to over the next few weeks to months? Like give us the give us the, uh, the the highlights. What do we have to look forward to? So first, we would like to secure a parachain slot as soon as possible. And now it is very intensive moment. We got a lot of question and we have a lot of interaction AMA and, you know, we have to develop a lot of the things in November and December. So our primary goal is goal is securing parachain slot as soon as possible and enjoy Christmas holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Just for one day. No, no week yeah. off, right? <laughs> I, I want to, yeah, probably a week or so. <laughs> let's, let's try let's try getting that week <laughs> right. but, um, it's and, like an like an addiction as well as well um, being involved in this so uh, always trying well, to get some rest so yeah i think that that's a that's going to be a mandatory thing but well now that you brought up christmas i have to ask you one qu random question because i heard this recently and i'm not sure if it's true so maybe you can validate this i've heard that KFC is very popular in Japan at Christmas time. Is this a true thing or is this just some rumor that I've heard? <laughs> I think it is true that people are going to order KFC and enjoy <laughs> with the family. So, oh, hey, I love you. fried chicken, so I'm, I'm totally supportive <laughs> of that tradition. Um, so, uh, you know, now we're right on the precipice of a new uh, new network going live. 
what do you think is going to happen? What, what kind of relationship do you think is, is going to be formed between Kusama and Polkadot as a result of, of, of so much interest here? Do you think people are going to start focusing more on Polkadot or, or do you think both networks are going to thrive pretty, pretty uh, equally? Yeah, I, I think um, both will be having their use cases being built on top. And first of all, acting like a Canary network, but also um, we see it more as well as a great R&D chain or like a playground for us for us to test everything out to see would it work. Um, this is what we want to do on 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 a polka dot on our polka dot chain. For example, we had like for for DAP staking, would it work to have like more than two thousand stakers in a smart contract, or would it work to to or how would the community react react if we do like twenty percent of our transaction fee burning? Um, how would things react if we're doing this? How would, and that's only possible when you do this on a chain that has like economic value. If you're doing a test net, it's like, go ahead. It doesn't matter. But if you're doing it in, in a chain that has economic value and um, completely changed everything, then, then you really can test out if it would work. And then there will be projects who will only be focusing on Kusama because they have the freedom of doing what they want to do or, or have the freedom as a developer to, to try and to, to do things. And when they will go to Polkadot, Polkadot will be more like um stable and and security and, and more about this like doing changes on 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 for us as a parachain doing changes on poker that would take a little bit longer than it would be on kusama um and that will also be for some projects some projects will be there for for creating nft marketplace and doing some playground things for the community and then you have like projects who are aiming to be like financial projects, financial DEXs or trading that really needs to be solid, a solid rock and the poker ecosystem building on a star. So that's a completely other use cases than someone who's, who's, who's playing around with farming and, 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 and youth and things like that. So um, I think both will have their value. And I think only the future will, will, will point out where it will go. It's still something that we don't know what, where it will go, where it will go. Yeah. But we see the value of having two economic chains and we and we think that one day there will be the bridge between Polkadot and Kusama where everything will be th- uh, going um, to each other. And yeah, looking forward to that. Well, you have to be careful calling NFTs a playground. You know, people take yeah, those NFTs yeah. pretty seriously. You might have people uh, hammering you on Twitter now after saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I'm. Um, you, you you brought up one um, one one uh, thought to my mind, which is. You know, at some point in time, uh, the lease for your Kusama auction uh, slot uh, will will it will come up. Like the ex- expiration date will be hit, and you guys will need to decide whether or not you're going to renew that, or, or like what your strategy will be. Um, do you guys have any idea what you're planning for that, or, or how you will handle that, or are you just like setting that for some some day in the future to worry about? No, we are already working on this as well because. Um, we at Chiden or a star, we are creating a smart contract platform for developers. And because Kusama and Polkadot doesn't support smart contracts by design, a parrot chain that has smart contract features is needed. And we will do our best to give this to developers who want to build an ecosystem of Polkadot and Kusama. And we will go for every slot. We will We will be there for sure. What have you guys learned from the other project teams that that you've kind of adopted or maybe taken into your strategy? Is there anything you've learned from seeing others uh, go through this process? Yeah, uh, we have been working closely with Moonbeam and Akara. And I know Akara guys before they started Akara, so kind of old friends. Uh, they, are, they are doing a great job and we have to learn a lot of the things from them. But uh, mainly we are discussing the future collaboration, like cross-chain messaging passing and technical upgrades. So we learned a lot from Akala and Moonbeam about like technical updates and how to make cross-chain messaging passing happen. So it is, Polkadot is not, Parachain is not live yet, but once it is live, I think we can see a lot of the great use cases on the top of Polkadot. And the cross-chain messaging passing is such a innovative feature only Polkadot has. 
So we have to create a lot of the great use cases. Now it's sort of competition because of the nature of CloudRon, but it's going to be collaboration. Yeah, the, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, well, I mean, hey, this has been like an amazing conversation. I'm really glad to be able to have talk to you guys again. Um, I think what you're doing is, is really interesting. I think our audience is going to find it really enlightening. Um, if for those that are out there wondering where they can go to find out a little bit more about Astar and what, what's going on with your projects and your, and your parachain uh, auction, uh, where can they go to find out more? I'll just go to a star of astar.network. There's our website. You will find all the information as well. We have a very active Twitter. We have a very active Telegram. Just search for us. But the best way to go is just to our website, astar.network. And now you go find all the links as well. And you yep. can join our crowd loan to crowdloan.astar.network or through Quacon as well. Um, so we hope for the support from the community and looking forward to be a parachain of polka dots. This is what we are aiming from day one. And, uh, it's finally there, and we hope to have it very soon. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. It looks like you will have probably no problems getting there, but I'm sure <laughs> it's never, uh, it's never, the nerves never go away until it's actually final. But thank you no, so much for stopping by again. Uh, we really uh, appreciate having you on, Soda and Martin. No problem. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much for having us. Thank you. Lot. Thanks again to our guests, Soda and Martin. Make sure you like, subscribe, and review us on your favorite podcast platform. And we will be sure to bring you along as we get a backstage pass to the world of parachain auctions. Remember, you can always learn more about all things crypto by going to kraken.com slash learn. Until next time, I'm Brian Hoffman, and this has been the Parachain Auctions Podcast, hosted by Kraken. This content is not financial or investment advice. All interviews and discussions are opinions only. Kraken does not endorse the accuracy of this content. None of the following information should be construed as a recommendation to support any specific parachain project or to participate in parachain auctions in general. See our terms of service for more information.